Right, you could do an eight. Come on, eight. Oh, no. Oh, phew, ah, oh, eight, fantastic. Cool, okay, uh, one, two, what, what do you mean? No, it's an eight, it's definitely eight. Oh, are you saying I'm lying? No, no, it's an eight. Well, I could have turned them over, but you, you know, it was, I'm, I'm playing fair. What, you mean you couldn't see because they're on the floor? Well, I can't help that, you know. Anyway, let's play on. Oh, you're such a bad loser. Does this sort of thing happen to your family? Do you play board games and end up having big arguments over where the dice are rolled? Well, fear not, because what you need is a dice tray. And if your family doesn't play board games, a dice tray makes a fantastic gift for your friends. Let's make one now. So to get started with our dice tray, we're gonna need a few things. I'm going to start off with this nice block of oak that I've got left over from a different project. And I'm going to use this to make my four sides. And it's uh, just over four centimeters across, so I can make my sides around one centimeter thick. So that's nice, I'll do that in a minute. I'm gonna need a base. Uh, this is seven mil ply. It doesn't have to be as thick as this, but it's just what I happen to have, and it's quite nice plywood, so I quite like to use this for the base. So I'm gonna use this for the base. And then we need some felt or some leather to put on the base that you roll the dice onto. So it's got a nice thud and it, it sort of rolls nicely. And I got this from Amazon. I'll put the link on as usual. And what's nice about this, uh, I went for A4 size uh, pieces. They're not exactly A4, they're scraps. Um, but uh, they're all about that size. And you could probably get, you might get two uh, bases out of this. Um, each one. But what's really nice, they're all different colours. So we've got this uh, lovely sort of um, blood red one. We've got a light blue one. Uh, I've got a yellow, brown, purple, uh, and all sorts of colours, which is really nice. It was £20, um, but I think that's worth it if you're going to use all of them. Um, that's absolutely brilliant. So let's get started on the four sides. I'm gonna make the sides 23 centimeters. I did a prototype earlier and made them 20 centimeters and it just looked a little bit small. I thought you needed a bit more space for rolling. So I'm just making this a little bit longer for this one. Over to the mice saw. Unfortunately, the two sides aren't parallel to each other, so I'm just going to use my planer to fix that. Now that this is nice and square, I've set my bandsaw blade at eight millimeters. So we're going to do four eight millimeter cuts and I've allowed one millimeter between each one to take into account the size of the kerf of the blade. Now I've got my four sides and I'm just going to run them through the planer to smooth the sides and also make sure they are all exactly the same thickness. Perfect. 
So I've got my four pieces. They are now exactly the same thickness and they've got lovely smooth sides. Next step, which is to make the height of these a bit smaller. At the moment, these sides are too high for a dice tray. So we're going to make them 4.4 centimeters. So for the joints, I'm going to do mitre joints. I've got my mitre saw here set at 45 degrees. I've put a stop block here so that they're all in the same place. And we are going to create four mitered corners at 45 degrees. So I've done the four sides. Next, when I put them together, I don't want to see the edge to the plywood base. I want to cover it up. So I don't want it to be like this. I want it to be like that, okay? But I also want there to be a lip that presses down on the leather. So what I'm going to have to do is cut a rebate along the edge or a rabbit, as our cousins over in America call it. Uh, along this edge so that I can slot the base into it. So I'm going to be using my router for that. Next. So this is one of those times where a table saw would probably be a little bit easier to do this, uh, but I don't have one. So I'm going to use my router. I've set up a fence here that I can run it along and it will hopefully cut a nice neat groove along this edge. This is stuck down with some double-sided tape and I've made a mark so I can make sure I put all the pieces in the right place each time. So uh, let's see how it goes. Hmm. So it looks like uh, it has cracked the wood. I think there must have been um, a weakness there already. Hopefully I can fix it, but uh, it's quite a clean cut. Um, we've just got these cracks, so I think it was already uh, slightly weakened. Never mind, carry on. So all the other rebates cut really nicely. It was just the first one uh, that has split slightly. So you can see there's a crack there. So what I'm going to do is use some super glue, some CA glue, and hopefully strengthen that and fix it. I'm going to use the more watery super glue rather than the uh, thicker stuff. And that will hopefully um, trickle through into that gap better. Uh, and I've also got a bit of a gap there, which I'll also try to fix. So the glue has solved that little problem, which I'm really pleased with. Although I've ended up with uh, rather more glue than I was expecting. I think I got a bit overexcited with the glue. So uh, I've, got, I've got quite a lot that I now need to get off. Can you see it's all gone through the gaps? It is super solid, um, but now I've got to get that off. And anyone who's used uh, super glue knows how unbelievably hard it does go. So uh, this will be fun, but uh, better get started.
Okay, well, uh, that was a little bit fiddly, um, but I have managed to get uh, most of the glue off now, and I think a little bit of sanding here at the end will be fine. But uh, I feel there's probably must have been a better way of doing that. I'm not quite sure. Um, I don't think sanding would have uh, been very good. Um, I think we've just taken ages and ages to get through the glue. Um, but uh, yeah, if anyone's got any ideas, I should have done that better. Um, please comment on it. Uh, but yeah, I think we can um, carry on from here anyway. Okay, so now to assemble it, and I'm going to use the famous tape method of taping the corners and then folding it all up in one go. Okay, so um, I've put this uh, fence here just to make sure that these are all nice and straight and I'm just going to put a bit of tape over each bit. And then flip it over. And then put in the glue. Now I'm using, for those of you who are interested, I'm using Type Bond 3. This is overkill for this. It's just it's the only glue I've got in at the moment because um, this is all waterproof and so on. Type Bond 1, the first one will be fine, I would have thought, for this. You can do this method because it's not going to be under enormous uh, stress. So we don't really need to clamp it. Also, I don't have any corner clamps. Another reason. It's a bit too much on that one. I've also put down some packing tape on the table just so that the glue doesn't get everywhere. Another top tip. Looks like I've managed to get some table in. Here is where we find that my Miter saw isn't very accurate. <laughs> Slightly twisted. Okay. We'll leave that to dry. Let's see how it goes. Right, so whilst we wait for this to dry, I've measured the inside and it is exactly 21.4 centimetres across each of these sides. So we can now cut our base. So whilst that glue is drying, we can cut the base and put the leather onto the base. Off we go. Now I've cut this out and as we can see, check that it fits, that's rather nice, so that fits in there, I can go on drying and we're going to cut out our leather. So I've gone for the red, I think this looks lovely, uh, we've gone for the red, I just need to cut it out, I'm going to deliberately cut it too big and then we can trim it later. Uh, unfortunately, it's not quite enough. We won't be able to make two out of this, which is a shame. I'll have to think of something else for that. So I'm just going to mark it approximately slightly too big, just so that I've got enough. To glue it to the base, to glue leather to the base. Uh, fortunately, you can use normal wood glue for this. Uh, there are other ones that you can use. There are some that um, glue instantly, which I don't like the sound of because 
you get one little wrinkle in it and you've ruined it. So the thing with wood glue, of course, is that you can reposition it if necessary as well. So I'm going to stick with wood glue. It does work. And we just need to put some on. Nice and evenly. I don't want to get too much squeeze out from this. I want to be just enough to cover it. But you do need to get it right up to the edges in the corners because you don't want the leather to peel off at all. Well, I think it might be about right. Actually, that's good. Rather than clamp it, I'm just going to put a load of weights on it. But I'll first of all make sure I've got a nice flat surface first. I'm just going to use another piece of my plywood. And then onto here, I'm going to put some of these weights because it's the only use I'm going to get out of them. How many people have bought a set of dumbbells in their youth and used them like once? Oh, it's something else heavy. That's quite heavy. Okay. Right. That will do nicely. We'll come back to that when that's dry and when this is dry, and hopefully they'll all fit together nicely. Okay, so it's the next day. Let's see how it went. Get rid of these weights. That's gone perfectly. No air bubbles or anything, it's completely smooth. And I just now need to trim the edges. And we can see how well it fits. If you're cutting through leather, I would recommend putting in a new blade so that it cuts nice and easily. Very good. Let's see how well it fits. I think I may need to trim a bit more of the leather off. Ah, 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 yay, there we go. And we're pretty much finished. Let's go do some cleaning up. There's a bit of glue on there. And glue this to the base. I'm just going to smooth over these corners by hand. They're not perfectly lined up, especially the last one. Now I'm going to sand the top clean it up and try to repair these little gaps we've got in these two corners. The way I'll do that is I'm going to put a little bit of glue in the gap and then just sand it. And the idea being that 
as I sand, sawdust will go into the gap and act as a filler. I'll also do the other side, but I won't film that because it's just more of the same. Before I glue the base on, now of course is the best time to sand the inside as well. It'll be much easier to do it now than later once the base is on. Right, we're now ready to glue it. So, a thin amount of glue around all the edges. Let's turn it 90 degrees. That's better. Okay. Uh, more squeeze out in that corner than I expected. So annoyingly we've got some squeeze out. Now this is something I should have anticipated. Um, maybe next time put uh, some tape down or something so that we don't get this. So I'm going to use a screwdriver to just try to clean this up. There we have it. I've sanded all round, smoothed everything very nicely. And all I'm going to do now is put some finish on it. Uh, I've decided to go with uh, my own mix of mineral oil and beeswax and that will go on the leather as well so it will protect everything. I'll put that on now and then we'll be finished. And our dice tray is completed. I hope you've enjoyed that video. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. And I would love to hear if anyone decides to have a go at making this themselves. See you next time.